Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen, looking at PTU patch 3.5.0Q, its additions and what we need for a live build. So the new features in the patch, they've added armor loadouts for Area 18 factions, they've updated derelict collection missions, so only those in your locality, in your local area, are offered. They've increased the time the player has to complete derelict collection cargo missions as well, various polish and bug fixes for the Pacheco missions, the Twitch missions. The final wave for ECN missions should now spawn properly, players should no longer be occasionally instantly killed in their cockpits during a dogfight, which is fantastic. Uh, the bob hairstyle should now have a preview on the dna customizer nav points should now only be visible when in quantum travel or scan mode residue party markers should no longer appear for all players on the map which is absolutely fantastic and uh, lots of clearing up to the hud done in this patch fixes for auto landing not connecting to the pad correctly have been made again something that was superb as a fix uh, recover cargo missions should now should no longer have friendly AI ships. The flight HUD should no longer become static if the player exits and re-enters the seat. They fixed a server crash and two client crashes as well. There are still some major known issues with the patch. No fly zone autopilot takeover is inconsistent. This is when you are going into the no fly zones in planets. So they don't kill you anymore is the idea. They allow you to um, get very close to the ground. There's no hard kill area. It sort of like just pulls you out is the idea. But again, that's inconsistent. And sometimes you will be pulled into the ground. Players arrive at planetary destinations just outside of the trigger for quantum travel points. The workaround there is to fly toward the planet or moon for a moment to trigger the quantum travel point um, and then you will be able to travel there jittering or stationary ai may be encountered and that is a major problem there was some great quality of life improvements in this build the hud seems a bit cleaner without nav points everywhere though i had to cycle my quantum drive uh, sometime to make the sort of like HUD markers disappear and actually work as intended. Ships actually being able to land properly is a win as well. It seems a lot of the 30k server crashes and many common disconnects have been fixed in the patch as well. Although apparently those 30k server crashes do still happen. People were testing them out earlier and I was reading about that on Spectrum and Reddit. Um, there is issues where you cannot see the previews of items that you are purchasing in shops, which is actually quite annoying when you want to buy coloured armour, for example, or different skinned weapons. There are still issues with boxes on some ships, placing them down will have them bug out or simply fall through the ship's floor or the floor of the planet or wherever you are on. The main issue for the patch for me, though, is ESP, pips, combat AI and auto gimbals altogether. ESP just still pulls you wherever it wants. Even when you are not moving and have perfect shots and perfectly on target, the ESP will still pull you to the side sometimes. Literally just going, what what, what are you doing, ESP? Uh, pips do not match to the target a lot of the time as well now. This could be issues with the AI and the new weapon velocities and things like that. But I find that pips align to players and sometimes not at all with NPCs. So much easier to hit players with pips, I find. Uh, again... This means that auto gimbals consistently miss a target, um, even when locked on, because they're aiming at the wrong area. Other than that, the general combat AI is still pretty derpy. Ships rarely engage you, um, and then when they do, they sort of like just let you shoot them and then die. I've heard this is a bug and a server issue that they are solving at the moment, but th they literally just let you shoot them to death. Occasionally, they do one fly past or will shoot you um, very briefly, but then, then they're done. Um... It's a similar story for the FPS AI. They do move around and sometimes even shoot you, but they are pretty lobotomized, slow, jittery, and nothing is really any form of threat. Um, there are certainly bugs here. There are certainly problems they need to iron out, and they do really need to get AI and ship aiming working a lot better for the live build, if nothing else. It's the core of the PvE content, and with missions working so well, they need to get the AI at working. Uh, we are nine days overdue for a live build, but obviously the PTU is available to everyone. They are fixing a lot of stuff, trying to get those blockers out of the way ASAP, and I suppose if they had released it to a live build, we'd just be getting 3.5.x patches to fix these things in the similar sort of vein that we've been having the PTU, so bear that in mind. But um, tell me what you think in the comments down below.
Every month we have a giveaway for a Star Citizenship for April 2019. We are giving away a Drake Corsair with lifetime insurance. It's the new concept ship focused on exploration. And the loaner for that ship is currently the Constellation Aquila and the Buccaneer. To be in for a chance of winning, be subscribed to my channel and comment on any video that I put out during April. Full details in the description below. Need a PC or upgrade to play Star Citizen? Consider Shadow. Shadow is a cloud-based subscription alternative to a gaming PC and it works with Star Citizen Alpha 3.5 better than it ever has. It leverages the power of the internet to give you a Windows 10 gaming environment potentially anywhere. Check out the links below or go to shadow.tech for more information. Use the code BOARDGAMER to receive a discount on your subscription if you do decide to try it. I'm not sponsored or paid by Cloud Imperium in any way. This is a Star Citizen news and fan channel that is supported by you, the community. Patreons, donations, subscribe stars, YouTube members, that little join button underneath my videos, all help support the channel and allow me to create regular video content, maintain a website, upload podcasts, and more. If you wish to go that extra mile, it is amazingly helpful. There is occasional exclusive content for those that do as well.